Hey guys, so the next step is going to be to code our player. Now, if you already noticed, we already have a sort of pre-built code here. We're going to code this later. So we're actually going to not focus on this right now. We're gonna go a little bit above it and we're going to start adding other codes to it first before we tackle this one over here. So to begin, we're going to click on our yellow events tab and we're going to use when green flag clicked. And then we're going to go into our variables. We're going to set dead to zero. So we know we're still able to play. And we're going to go into looks and we're going to hide. Next, we're going to go into our yellow events tab. We're going to add when I receive. We're going to change this to start game. And then we're going to hide. After that, we're going to go to our yellow events tab again. When I receive two, we're going to go ahead and set dead to zero. These are just precautions to make sure that even though we've started our game by clicking the green flag, we also have a broadcast start game and we don't want it to kind of get it confused or not completely set the things that we want. So this is just to double check, just to make sure that everything is set for us. Right? After that, going to go ahead and go back into our yellow events tab. When I receive two, we're going to go into control and we're going to forever create clone of myself. And we're going to add a weight underneath that for 0 0.1. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and start working on this pre-built code that we already have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add stuff above the forever. And then afterwards, we're going to fill in whatever is missing inside of the other tabs. So above the forever, we're going to go ahead and go into looks and we're going to add a show. Under the show, we're going to switch costume to. We're going to go ahead and change it to our costume one. Then we're going to go into variables and we're going to set accuracy max to zero. Under that, we're going to go into motion and point into direction 90. Then we're going to go into looks and we're going to add a set size. If you're using the base one that we created, you're going to leave this at 70. If you made your own one later on when you're playing your game and testing it, you will have to come back to the set size and change the size of your player. Next, we're going to go inside of the blue motions tab and we're going to add a go to. This is just to create our starting position. So X will be zero and our Y would be negative 120. After that, we're going to go ahead and go into variables. We're going to add another set block and we're going to set X V. So our X velocity to zero. We're going to now set our speed. I'm going to change this to one. And then we're going to set our accuracy max. So ac max to 11. Okay. Now that we have that, the first if then bracket that's going to allow us to move with our right arrow, still inside of our variables tab, we're going to add a change, our X velocity by one. For our left, we're going to add a change, X velocity. And since we want it to do the opposite, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into our operators and we're going to use our multiplication symbol for this. 
the left hand side bubble is going to use the variable speed. So I'm going to add the speed bubble here. And then this will change this to negative one. Hey okay, guys. After that, the next if statement that we have here, we're going to go ahead and add an if then else. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. So that last one, we're going to add an if then else. Inside of the diamond shape, we're going to go into operators and we're going to use a greater than. And then we're going to go into variables and add our x velocity and change the 50 to a 0. Okay. So now this is to help when we're transitioning between using both keys to kind of know how much the speed should slow down and then rapidly go back up. So we're going to add a change to both of these. And they'll both be our x velocity. Next, they'll both have the division symbol. So we're going to go into operators and add a divide for each. And for both of them on the left hand side, you're going to go ahead and add the speed bubble for each. Okay. Now for the very first one, we're going to make this negative two. And the second one, we're just going to make two. Okay. Now we just need to make sure that we know when our player is touching our enemy. So below everything, but still inside of that forever, we're going to go inside of control and add an if then. So right here. Then we're going to go into sensing and seeing if it's touching our enemy. And if it is, we're going to go inside of the events tab and we're going to broadcast three. If you don't have this, you can just go ahead and click on new message and then just type in a three and just make sure that this says broadcast three. Then we're going to set. So we're going to go into variable. We're going to set dead to one, which means we cannot play the game anymore. And then we're going to go into looks and we're going to hide. Okay. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go into our control tab and we're going to add a when I start as a clone. We're going to set, so still inside of looks, set color that we're changing it to ghost effect to 50. Next, we're going to go inside of our blue motions tab and add a change X by. And we're going to add a pick random from our operators from negative 10 to 10. And then we're going to go into looks and we're going to add a set size to and we're just going to use the same pick random. So I'm just going to duplicate and add it here. We're changing this to 40 to 110. Next, we're going to switch costume to costume four. After we're going to go into control and add a repeat until and we're checking to see if it's touching edge. So we're going to go into sensing, change this to touching edge. Inside of the repeat, we're just going to change Y by negative five. And then afterwards in control the way at the bottom, we're going to add a delete this clone. Okay. So now to give our score uh, and have that counting for us, we're going to add a when I receive two. So we're going to go inside of events. So when I receive two, 
I'm going to go ahead and go into control and we're going to repeat until and we're checking to see if we've lost. So our operators, we're going to add an equal sign. The 50 will be changed to a one. And then we're going to go into our variables and add dead. So this is how we know if we've lost. So as long as we have not lost, what we're going to do is we're going to add a score. So we're going to go into variables and add a change score. Uh, and there are two of them. Just use the one that doesn't have the exclamation mark at the end. So change score by one. You guys can also change this to whatever point system you want. So if you want to give your players two instead or three, that's up to you. And then underneath that, we're going to go into control and add a weight. And we're going to change this to 0 0.1. So this is how long it will take before you get your next point for the game. So if you want to make it harder, you might want to make it longer to actually have the player wait a little bit before they get their next score. If you want to make it easier, you can make the number even smaller than 0 0.1. That way, the player is getting more points uh, with less amount of time. So that's kind of up to you guys. And then underneath this, we're going to go back into our variable and we're going to go ahead and set our score and make sure it's the same one that you're using to zero. And with that, you're pretty much all set. It's always nice to make sure you're testing out your game and make sure that everything is working. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the green flag, click on play. Okay. So I can see that everything is working. I'm able to move. And then I do lose when I have that. So with everything working, I'm all set. And then I can move on to doing other stuff. So just make sure you guys are double checking all your code, making sure everything is working. If you don't see the score, that's only because we haven't actually created the artwork for it. If you do want to be, be able to see it for right now while you're testing your game and playing it, you just have to go to your variable tab go to the score and check it on and then it'll keep track of your score this way but later on once we do create the artwork for it you can just go ahead and check it right off uh, since you'll have the artwork showing you exactly what you're getting for your score